So now we will be talking about the lab diagnosis of the Korean bacterium diphtheri. Now, uh, when you were asked about the lab diagnosis of the Korean bacterium diphtheri, then you have to first mention it that the diagnosis of the Korean bacterium diphtheri or the fossil diphtheria is done clinically only. The lab diagnosis is only for the confirmation of your clinical diagnosis because we cannot wait for the lab to confirm the fossil diphtheria because if you wait for the confirmation from the laboratory for that uh, Korean bacterium diphtheria induced uh, fossil diphtheria then you may lose the patient because uh, in the fossil diphtheria there is continuous extension of the pseudo membrane over the larynx thereby blocking the airway which may lead to suffocation and the death of that person so that's why you have to immediately start the treatment uh, whenever you clinically diagnose a case of fossil diphtheria uh, but yes of course for uh, medical legal purposes you have to keep the uh, you know the confirmation also with you that confirmation will be done by the lab diagnosis so that's why the lab diagnosis in case of fossil diphtheria is only for confirmation as it is an emergency situation now whenever you are going for a lab diagnosis of any condition any uh, you know uh, any disease then you have uh, in microbiology then you have to first do the specimen collection and the fossil diphtheria is no exception to this rule here also we will be doing the specimen collection so in the specimen collection what specimens will we choose so we we will be choosing two throat swabs plus we will be choosing a portion of pseudo membrane so two specimens should be collected one is two throat swabs plus the other one is the a portion of pseudo membrane why are we choosing two throat swabs will one not do our job why are we needing two uh, throat swabs so you have to remember that one is for direct smear preparation while the other is for the culture whenever you ask uh, whenever examiner asks you in the why why about this why are you choosing two, th two throats well then you should know this that one is for direct smear and the other one is for culture preparation so these two is is specimen you have to collect after that you have to go for the direct smear preparation staining and the microscopy so in the second step of the lab diagnosis a smear is made on a slide with the throat swab and it is stained with the gram stain and the albert stain we will talk about the albert stain and gram stain both of them uh, in our general microbiology chapter uh, so uh, for the time being you just remember that we will stain it with the gram stain and the albert stain two types of stains are used to stain uh, the smears so when we stain it with the gram stain and see it under the microscope we find there the gram positive bacilli in uniform arrangement or the chinese letter arrangement but when we do uh, staining with the albert stain then we find the green bacilli with bluish metachromatic granules if you uh, if you see this you can find it very easily that the bacilli are green in color plus there is metachromatic granules which are at the pores and they are bluish black in color so uh, by the albert stain you can find the granules color at the bacilli color differentiated and by that you can visualize the uh, visualize both of them the granules as well as the bacilli okay so in the albert stain uh, that is a very peculiar stain for the Korean bacterium diphtheria. You should remember that. And there is some uh, important points about the metachromatic granules, which you should remember that the metachromatic granules are nothing but the storage granules, which are made of the polymetaphosphates. This may be asked in the uh, MCQs. So the metachromatic granules are the storage granules, which are made up of the polymetaphosphates. And how? can you uh, stain this uh, polymetaphosphate storage granules so there are different stains by which you can visualize this metachromatic granules out of which i have mentioned some of them here so those are the ponders stain the nasers stain and the albert stain these are the three most important stains which are asked in the exams and by these stains you can visualize those metachromatic granules okay 
so now we are going to the cultures so talking about the cultures there how can you culture this corin bacterium diphtheri so corin bacterium diphtheri is a fastidious bacteria the sorry for this uh, so corin bacterium diphtheri is a fastidious bacteria okay the corin bacterium diphtheri is a fastidious bacteria what is mean of fastidious fastidious means it needs blood fastidious jahan bhi aaye iska matlab ek hi hai that the bacteria jo hai wo khoon chusne wala bacteria hai so fastidious matlab hota hai ki khoon chusne wala bacteria okay so similarly the corin bacterium diphtheri is also a fastidious bacteria so it requires some enriched media and those enriched media are the blood agar and the low flux serum slope and what type of colonies do we find on those agar so we find the smaller circular white colonies over the enriched agars and there are some selective media as well so there are uh, these are the enriched medias and then we have some selective media as well for the corin bacterium diphtheri the selective medias are for the isolation of the bacteria because in the selective media the normal flora gets inhibited okay and uh, that selective media allows the growth of that particular bacteria for which it is selective so that is the uh, importance of the selective media we know that in the throat there are many uh, commensals so it is very tough to differentiate these commensals from the corin bacterium diphtheri which is pathogenic in case of uh, fossil diphtheria that's why we need the help of the selective media and that uh, selective media function is served by the potassium telluride agar that is served by the potassium telluride agar on which there is production of black colonies please remember this that the corin bacterium diphtheri on the pta agar produces the black colonies why is this so this is because of the reduction of the telluride to the metallic tellurium by the corin bacterium diphtheri so tellu telluride is converted into metallic tellurium that's why the colonies color becomes black this is a very important question uh, very uh, often asked in the um, mcqs as well but again there is entry of some exceptions here also so these black colored colonies are uh, not only produced by the corin bacterium diphtheri rather this is also produced by the the corin bacterium ulcerans and the corin bacterium pseudo tuberculosis remember i have talked about this corin bacterium ulcerans and pseudo tuberculosis at one other point also that they are also capable of producing the corin i mean the diphtheria toxin okay they are the only diphtheroids which can produce the diphtheria toxin and again here also they are the only diphtheroids which can produce the black colonies on the potassium telluride agar so that's make uh, that makes them very useful and very important uh, diphtheroids for us now coming to the biochemical tests so by biochemical test we can differentiate between the corin bacterium diphtheria ulcerans and the pseudo tuberculosis okay so those biochemical tests which uh, help us to differentiate between them is the pyrazinamidase test and the urease test so the pyrazinamidase test uh, for the uh, corin bacterium ulcerans and the pseudo tuberculosis both is negative plus it is negative for diphtheria also but the difference lies in the urease test why because the urease test is positive for both the corin bacterium ulcerans and the pseudo tuberculosis but it is negative but it is negative for the corin bacterium diphtheri okay it is negative for the corin bacterium diphtheri that's why it becomes a uh, a method by which we can differentiate between the corin bacterium ulcerans and the corin bacterium diphtheri okay and that differentiation is very important why because they are behaving similarly to the corin bacterium diphtheri one they were producing the uh, diphtheria toxin similar to the corin bacterium diphtheri and two they are producing the similar type of black colored colonies on the potassium telluride agar so 
that will give rise to the suspicion of the corn bacterium diphtheria. That's why it is important to differentiate between these two uh, so as to introduce the treatment correctly. Now, so uh, biochemical test helps us uh, in that. Next, what we have is the toxin demonstration. The toxin demonstration. So, uh, we have uh, learned that uh, all of the symptoms are due to the diphtheria toxin only not due to the bacteria itself so the toxin demonstration can be done in vivo that is inside an animal uh, so uh, many years ago it was done in guinea pig but now it is obsolete okay due to rapidly arising rights of the animals also nowadays so that's why it has been uh, obsolete now but in vitro it can be demonstrated at current time so that demonstration or uh, of the toxin in vitro is done by the elex gel precipitation test so it is a double diffusion in vitro precipitation test which is used to demonstrate the diphtheria toxin now it confirms the toxicity of the organism we will discuss about this elex gel precipitation test in very 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 much detail because it is asked as a short note uh, or a separate question in the university exam so it is very important for us to know about this elex gel precipitation test we will uh, I, I mean i will make a separate video over this elex gel precipitation test Next, what we have is the automated identification methods, which are the Malitov and Vitex, uh, which we can use to detect this and or to diagnose this foreign bacterium diphtheria. Now, coming to the prevention part, how can we prevent this foreign bacterium diphtheria and the fossil diphtheria? So, for the prevention, we have to first control the infection. How can we control the infection? So for controlling infection, we have to isolate the patients, very important. Plus we have to take the droplet precautions. We have to wear the PPE mask, uh, you know, not PPE exactly, but we have to wear the masks, the gloves, etc. Uh, for protecting us uh, from the uh, diphtheria whenever uh, the healthcare workers or we uh, go to the, uh, go in contact of the diphtheria patients okay so by that by controlling the infection we can uh, prevent the diphtheria other methods for preventing diphtheria are the post exposure prophylaxis so in the post exposure prophylaxis a booster dose of diphtheria toxoid is given plus penicillin uh, g single dose is injected to all the contacts who have come close to the uh, close to a case of the diphtheria that serves the purpose of post exposure prophylaxis other than that we have vaccination as well so vaccination is done by the vaccination is done with the diphtheria toxoid or the diphtheria pertussis tetanus toxoid or the adult diphtheria uh, you know uh, tetanus toxoid so uh, this is these are all the vaccines which we can use for a vaccination against the diphtheria this uh, how do we prepare these toxoids for uh, or to be used as a vaccine so uh, for preparation of the toxoids we have to take up the toxins the toxins are converted to toxoids by the acidic ph or prolonged storage or by formalin so these are the three methods by which the toxins can be converted into the toxoids and after that they can be used for the vaccination uh, during the you know uh, epidemics or during uh, or in the national immunization schedule now this uh, source of toxin is very important we uh, do not uh, randomly take up the diphtheria toxin from any diphtheria okay we take it from the park william 8 strain of the corin bacterium diphtheria park william 8 strain again this is a potential question uh, that uh, which uh, strain of the corin bacterium diphtheria is used for the production of the diphtheria vaccine that is the 
Park William 8 strain. That is Park William 8 strain. Please remember this uh, information because it's this is a very important question also. So this is all about the lab diagnosis of the corn bacterium diphtheria. Next we will talk about uh, the electrical precipitation test and then uh, we will come to an end of this corn bacterium diphtheria. So this is all about the lab diagnosis of corn bacterium diphtheria.